Welcome to the Intelligence Hour, cutting edge expose on the actions of government in light of the U.S. Constitution. I am your humble host, former CIA officer Kevin Shipp, reporting to you from a secure studio somewhere deep in the southern United States. As always, I introduce this program with these questions. Do we live under a post-constitutional government? Is there really a shadow government or massive system controlled by secrecy or deep state that controls Washington, D.C.? And it's ironic that the director of the CIA has just come out in a statement yesterday stating that the CIA is not part of the deep state. The uh, humorous part about that is in my lectures, uh, I make it clear that the CIA is part of the shadow government, not part of of the deep state. But that's a whole nother uh, lecture. Uh, But let us ask ourselves this. Why does it seem like congressional hearings on government corruption never go anywhere? Trey Gowdy's a great orator, wonderful orator, but after the hearings are over, nothing happens. Why do government officials and the heads of major Wall Street corporations commit crimes and even lie under oath, but they're never charged, while Americans of lesser status are hit with maximum penalties? Why do congressmen and senators from both parties promise their voters peace and solutions to their financial crisis when they're running for office? Then when they get in there and they vote for billion dollar wars, foreign coups and covert programs that violate international law and many times human rights violations, which is the case of Syria. 500,000 civilians have died already. And here is the big one. Why does the national media not report important stories like this or just parrot the stories of government? And we're going to do a whole separate show on that uh, because there's a clear reason why. These are the issues that we deal with on this program every week, head on, with no conservative or liberal bias, no Republican or Democratic influence. We just don't go there. That's how they divide us. We center around the Constitution when we stop doing that then they have us. The Intelligence Hour has one goal, to fulfill our constitutional responsibility to inform you, the American people, our audience, about the actions of your government. You are the voice of government by the people. You are the solution to restoring freedom, peace, and justice in this country, and you can make a difference. Because I believe in your courage and your resolve to make a difference. I humbly take the risk every week to expose the unconstitutional actions of government. And I do it because I adore this country. I served it for most of my professional life, and I do it even above that for the love of freedom. So sit back and relax on this Monday evening and join us. I've got two very, very honorable guests this evening that will be joining us for a fascinating discussion on the current state of our government, considering the greatest governing document ever written in the history of mankind, the United States Constitution. And tonight, we have as our honored guest, former DEA supervisor Hector Berea. And Hector, I hope I'm pronouncing that properly, who will be discussing his experience as a DEA supervisor involved in uh, uh, busting drug drug operations in South and Central America, and uh, which uh, crossed paths with his experience with the CIA. 
who claims they've never been involved in drug running. But Dr. Paul Williams, I, and probably Hector, know that that is certainly not the case. Uh, so we'll be talking to, to, to uh, Hector about that. And joining me, my personal friend, uh, I call him the quintessential investigative journalist. I wish I just had one-tenth of his energy. Uh, the man is just an amazing author, an amazing investigator. Dr. Paul Williams, former consultant of the FBI, professor of humanities at the University of Scranton, and author of over 20 books including one of my personal favorites, Operation Gladio, the unholy alliance between the Vatican, the CIA, and the mafia, and his soon-to-be-released to book, Killing Uncle Sam, written with uh, a, a good friend of ours, Pastor Rodney Howard Brown. And I have to tell everyone out there, I have read that book from top to bottom. I think it's, uh, Paul, Paul will probably add to that, it's coming out, I think, in May. Everyone needs to get a copy of that book. Uh, because it is absolutely outstanding tracing where we lost our democracy and our constitutional uh, government down through the year. It's brilliant. Uh, since I have to say this, I have to give a, a, a caveat. I've managed to stay uh, out of uh, disappearance or, or the uh, slammer for years, just being very careful. And as a former CIA officer, I'm bound by the Intelligence Activities Protection Act of 1982, so I can't mention, confirm, or deny, quote unquote, any CIA personnel involved in these events. Uh, they'd probably come and whisk me away the next day. Um, so I'll let Hector and Paul cover anything that they want, and I mean anything that they want, and I'll moderate the discussion. I'm not afraid of the big bad wolf. Uh, but I need to, do, do need to be careful uh, if I want to continue doing this. So, uh, 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 DEA Supervisor Hector Berea and Dr. Paul Williams, uh, it is an honor. I want to welcome you both to the program. It's great to have you. It's good to be with you, buddy. Great to be with you, Kevin. Now, now Paul, you being an expert on this uh, far more than most, I just want you to feel uh, free to jump in with questions anytime during this. Uh, you're an expert on this, and, and I think your questions uh, will be uh, certainly uh, important. And, and Hector, what I want to do, you and I have, ha have had discussions about this before. You have been on interviews before where they have edited out some of the important things that you've said. And uh, I, I can guarantee you on this program, we don't edit things out. Um, you have quite a story to, to, to tell regarding your experience with drug operations in Central and South America uh, as a DEA supervisor and, and, and an honorable and decorated one. Uh, and what you witnessed during your time with the DEA and, and some of your activities that cross paths uh, with CIA dr drug running. So, so Hector, uh, please, uh, for our audience, because this is, I think, an honor for many uh, Hector, go ahead and, and tell your story going all the way back in the beginning and leading up to what you experienced, experienced while you were there. Okay, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Hector Bereyes. I am a retired DEA agent. While with the DEA, I was assigned to supervise Operation Leyenda, a task force which had been uh, delegated investigative responsibilities over the kidnap, torture, and murder of another DE agent, fellow agent, Enrique Kiki Camarena. While investigating uh, the uh, Enrique Camarena case, I learned that a CIA contract pilot by the name of Warner Lutz had flown Caro Quintero out of Guadalajara, Mexico, after he had participated in killing our agent, Kiki Camarena. I started to dwell into who this pilot was wanting to obviously uh, indict him for accessory to um, murder. And when I did that, uh, I brought in uh, five other pilots that were also contract pilots for the CIA, requesting that they identify this, 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 this uh, Warner Lutz to me, where he was, where I could find him to basically uh, interrogate him and try to get an indictment for accessory to murder. When I brought these five pilots into uh, the Los Angeles area to investigate them, all five of them admitted that they had been flying a lot of cocaine from South America 
into the United States for the CIA, the DIA, and the NSC. It's not just the CIA here, ladies and gentlemen, almost all of our intelligence communities. But let me take you back a little bit, if I may, real quickly, as to what was going on and what, what, why was the CIA involved in this stuff. Well, in 1979, the Sandinista communist government, backed by the Cubans and the Soviets, I may say, toppled the Anastasio Somoza government in Nicaragua. The Somoza national government, or now known as the Contras, continued resisting the Sandinistas. Congress basically not wanted itself or the U.S. to be involved in another war, passed what was called in 1984 the Bolin Amendment, which prohibited our intelligence agencies from funding nor providing military assistance to the Contra freedom fighters. The U.S. then, in a total violation of the Bolin Amendment, secretly involved itself in an unauthorized war in Nicaragua. To fund this war in Nicaragua, the U.S. government, through the NSC, the DIA, and the CIA, Oliver North included, uh, colluded with members of the not only Guadalajara Mexican drug cartel, but also with the Medellin drug cartel of Pablo Escobar in Colombia. And Hector, let me jump in there and, and just remind our audience that that is what you just said, and, and, I, and I happen to know it is accurate. That is a violation of U.S. law. It is a uh, complete circumvention of Congress, probably at, at the least contempt, is a violation of U.S. law, constitutional law, and even international law, what they did, uh, which you just said. But I'm sorry, please go on. Well, you're, you're correct. And, and, and this violation transcended between three administrations, the Reagan, the Bush, and also the Clinton. Well, yes. the White House, the NSC, and the CIA justified their criminal involvement uh, of drug trafficking, gun running, money laundering, and even assassinations in the righteous attempt to stamp out communism in Central America. Now, these, all these folks, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, all these folks basically thought that they were doing the right thing because, remember, they had, we had just come out of a war in, in Vietnam. There was a lot of CIA personnel, a lot of them that were involved, involved in the Phoenix Project, that were transferred over into Central and South America, basically to do the same thing that they were doing in, 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 uh, in Vietnam. So now we have this, all these folks involved in gun running, and I'll repeat it, drug trafficking, laundering of billions of dollars, um, and, and, even, and even committing assassinations against anybody that might expose their operations. This was a major secret operation they did not want to dis, uh, basically disclose the u.s government knowing that the american people would never tolerate its involvement in drug trafficking what That's they right. did to cover to cover their crimes they, they became uh, an, uh, they went on a counteroffensive to discredit and even eliminate anyone offering any evidence of their criminal involvement with the drug cartels Kiki Camarena happened to be one of them. Okay. Kiki Camarena, the agent, received information that at a ranch in Veracruz, where the NSC and CIA were training uh, white guerrilla death, death, death squads and contra freedom fighters, basically they were training them there, and the ranch belonged to Guadalajara drug thinking. Kingpin, Ernest, uh, Ernesto José Carrillo, and Rafael Caro Quintero. They decided that they were going to uh, bring in Camarena. The initial orders were not to kill him. When Kiki Camarena was kidnapped in front of a U.S. consulate, okay, by, by, by the way, kidnapped by the DFS, the Director of Federal Security, which is uh, Mexico CIA, who operate directly, as, as we know, under the uh, supervision of our CIA, they kidnap Kiki Camarena. They, they take him to the drug lord's house where he is interrogated. During in the interrogation process, a Cuban shows up, which was out of the ordinary. I have three witnesses that were there at the house where Camarena was being tortured. And they know this Cuban person as a CIA 
agent or operative, which uh, they knew by the name of Max Gomez, which totally you know shocked me because I'm saying, what is a CIA agent or operative or what have you, contract worker or whatever he was, doing there in interrogating our agent with, with these drug lords and these DFS people? Well, what I didn't know is that this CIA guy was supervising the whole interrogation of our agent, and this has never come out. I'm coming out publicly for the first time. Good for you, Hector. And I'm not afraid, and Kevin, I'm not afraid to expose it because, you know, there, there is nothing more powerful than the truth. Nothing yeah, Hector, you're, you're a truth. hero. This is, this is what the American people under, under a constitutional government need. You're a hero. Uh, please go on. Uh, thank you. So, you know, I, I am shocked. So I started investigating more this, this DFS, Director of Federal Security, CIA connection to, to, to Camarena's murder. And, and having worked in Mexico, um, I knew how close the DFS was with the CIA, how they worked together, how the CIA trained the DFS in the United States in intelligence and counterintelligence operations. So I knew that there was no way that the CIA, I mean, the DFS, excuse me, was going to go kidnap an American DEA agent when at least not the CIA knowing about it. So that made me very suspicious in my investigation. Another thing that very made me suspicious about my investigation was credible sources told me and my, my, my task force that a CIA pilot by the name of Warner Lutz had flown Caro Quintero out of Guadalajara after he had been involved in Kiki's murder because we were looking for him. He knew we were looking for him. He was one of the main suspects right after Kiki was kidnapped, tortured, and murdered. And we find out that a CIA contract pilot, Warner Lutz, flew him to, of all places, Costa Rica to hide him there. So basically, I am now faced with, I've got a CIA agent, Max Gomez, and now I, I'm Jerry Guinea Camarena at the torture house. And now I have information that a CIA pilot flew Caro Quintero out of the country so we, the DEA, could not get our hands on him. And at that point, of course, I become very, very curious as what is going on here. So I try to, rec- I try to recruit people within the DFS to come forward and become basically double agents, become my sources, and I did. And one of his main sources, which is a commandante of the DFS, tells me there's, a, there's, a, there's an Anglo guy running around working for the DFS who is CIA. And I said, uh, I need to get a hold of this guy because this guy could probably shed light uh, on the investigation as to why the, the DFS was involved in picking up our agent. And uh, so, the, the, so, so, so that's where the investigation really got really got hot because I recruit this this Anglo guy running around with the DFS on there, and I bring him in, and he admits to me that he works for the CIA, that he was basically placed into the into the DFS by the CIA to be liaison between the drug lords, the DFS, and the CIA. And when I'm debriefing this, this, this uh, CIA agent by the name of Lawrence Victor Harrison, which is the name that the CIA gave him, he tells me, we are government. Hector, we are government killed or ordered the, the, the killing of Agent Camarena. And I said, what do you mean we are government? What, I work for the DEA. Who do you work for? He said, duh. I work for the CIA. How do you think I got the job in the DFS? You think you, you can just walk in and get a job with a with a foreign intelligence agency without the CIA being involved. And by the way, he says, check my name. My name, my, my name is not Victor Lawrence Harrison. I said, your name is Victor Lawrence Harrison. I vetted you already. I already ran your prints and everything else. Well, run him under another name because Victor Lawrence Harrison is a CIA, is a name the CIA gave me. My name is George Marshall Davis. Run my prints under that name. So I run the prints under that name, and that's when I confirmed that this guy was really CIA because he had – Two identities in NCIC, the National Crime Information Center, run by our FBI. So I said, oh, my God, what have I got here? This is guys for real. And he's telling me that the reason Camarena was picked up was because he had stumbled into information linking 
the ranch in Veracruz, owned by Carlos Quintero, uh, which is uh, which is being used by Ali North and Ali North's enterprise to train right wing guerrilla fighters and also CIA contras. And he tells me, I've been at that ranch. And I said, you've been to that ranch? And he says, yes. He says, Carlos Quintero is totally under CIA payroll. And so is Juan Ramon Mata Ballesteros, another major drug lord of the, of the Guadalajara cartel. And he tells me, he says, the planes that they're using to fly weapons south and cocaine north are owned by uh, no other than Juan Ramon Mata Ballesteros, Cerco Airlines. So I said, oh, my God. So Juan Ramon Mata Ballesteros, one of my major trust suspects in Kiki's murder, and Rafael Carlos Quintero, uh, who is my major suspect in the murder of our agent, are both on the CIA payroll. Absolutely, 100%. They work for our, for our CIA. I know them all, and I know all the connections. I am floored when I hear this. So basically, Kiki Camarena very clearly was picked up to see what he knew about the Carlos Quintero Ranch, what he knew about the connections of the NSC, CIA, DFS, and the drug lords. And this had to be maintained, as I stated before, secret. Well, I started to basically uh, uh, dwell into this, this, this aspect of the investigation. And, of course, I was told, basically, we don't want to report in Mexican corruption. We want to just go after the traffickers. Uh, the CIA is not an agency you're going to investigate. You don't have jurisdiction to investigate them. And, by the way, don't be writing any investigative reports on this stuff. All of this stuff is top secret, reported all on interdepartmental memorandums, which are not DEA-6s. And they told me, do not report any of this at DEA-6s. We're trying to get NAFTA ratified right now, and we don't want to, we don't want to bash in the Mexicans uh, because there is opposition to NAFTA. We want NAFTA to be approved. So, therefore, report everything in memorandums, which are not investigative sixes, which we, can, we do not have to make available to you as Congress investigators. Hello. So, so, so they they basically uh, stopped you from reporting, uh, w- which was standard uh, DEA reporting in, in the uh, the files. They they told you basically not to report it or at least to destroy the evidence uh, in those reports of what was going on. Exactly. Not so much to destroy them, but not to report them in, in a way. In DEA investigative sixes, remember DEA investigative sixes have to be uh, there's a number investigative number to them, and they go on record. But I mean, internal memorandums, they're just they're just memorandums that, that, that anybody can destroy. There's no record of them. Yeah, that's the so same a lot thing. Of this information yeah, yeah. I, I wrote a secret memorandums on. Don't report is, is the same thing as uh, d- destroying what should have been reported. Yeah, yeah. Hector, uh, go ahead, please. Yes. Yeah, so anyway. This is what happens. Now, here I am, uh, what, uh, 20 some years later, and I see that El Chapo, the famous, El, the biggest drug lord ever, El Chapo Guzman, is, has been basically brought in from Mexico to face charges in the U.S. And as I'm watching the news, I see that El Chapo is not charged with any uh, of, of the murders that he should have been charged. More importantly, he was one of the traffickers that was there at the, at the torture house when Kiki was being interrogated and tortured. And I have three witnesses that saw El Chapo slap, spit, and kick Camarena in the stomach while he was being mm. interrogated. Mm. I have witnesses that will testify to that they were there, percipient, knowledgeable witnesses, okay? Good. The Great. U.S. Department of Justice knows this. However, why is it that they make, and I'm talking about the DOJ of, of Loretta Lynch while Obama was president, well, how do they make this deal with El Chapo's defense team? that they're not going to charge him with a murder of not only Kiki's murder, but six other Americans. Well, guess what, Hector? So, that just, that just so, came out. Thank you. Go ahead. Right. So here he is right now, ladies and gentlemen, sitting in New York City at a Metropolitan Detention Center. Why haven't they not charged him? And that's a question I've been asking. They're saying, well, because the agreement was that he would not be charged. Well, who would make some type of, of, of arrangement with the, the number one drug cartel lord in the country, that they're not going to charge him with these murders. What kind of a dumb, uh, you know, agreement was that? And who decided and who ordered that? And I kind of suspect there's corruption even behind that. 
Yeah, well, I think you're right on target. Ab absolutely. Uh, and this is what we've been talking about from the beginning of this program. This, this, this is the unconstitutional part of government. Who does any of us think any American would have voted for these things to happen? Who, who in Congress even would have voted for things, these things to happen? And, and the worst part is who even knew they were happening. That's what I call the tyranny of secrecy. And it is it is absolutely undermined our Constitution to the point of murder, human rights violations and even worse. Uh, so th this is a serious situation. So um, I'm sorry, Hector, uh, please. Continue. Kevin, bring it, bring it, bring it today. Just what a week ago. It, they exposed the Obama administration through Operation Cassandra. They, 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 they exposed the Obama administration of ordering DEA not to arrest Hezbollah hero, heroin distributors that are bringing in hundreds of pounds right. of heroin into the United States because right. President Obama wanted uh, to, to get this uh, Iran deal uh, basically approved. He didn't want to upset the Iranians, you know, um, by, 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 by arresting all these Hezbollah drug dealers and murderers, so he backed the DEA up. That's nothing new. When no, I was no, running the murderers, it's, the, it's the same old days. system that's been there for 40 years. Yes. Exactly. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. When I was running the Camarena murder case, I'm going to repeat it, and I already said it, I was ordered not to report Mexican corruption, okay, high government cabinet level Mexican officials that were in collusion with the Dwarajar drug cartel, I was ordered and I have supervisors that will back me not to report that in DEA 6s so, so Congress would approve NAFTA, which NAFTA turned out to be, as we know, a disaster for American working people. We lost all of our jobs because they went and tapped into the cheap labor in Mexico and Canada. Yeah, yeah, which, which, uh, thank God, Pre President Trump, with all the incoming he's getting, it has uh, dismantled that. Uh, Dr. Paul Williams, uh, let me bring you in. Uh, are there questions that you'd like to ask uh, uh, Supervisor uh, Hector um, um, uh, from this point on? Uh, <clears throat> I could spend all day listening to, uh, to Hector. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, he's confirming a lot of the things that, that of course, I've, I've written about and I've researched myself. But let me let, let me uh, let me ask you a couple questions. Uh, Barreros, right? Barreros, Mr. Barreros, am I saying your name right? Barreros, Barre Hector Barreros, Hector. Yes. Uh, did, what what do you have any information of drugs coming into U.S. military bases, like the Andrews uh, Air, Air Base Andrews and uh, Virginia? Absolutely. Uh, we, uh, when we talked to some of these pilots, they admitted that they were flying uh, the tons of cocaine, tons. I mean, they were, they were like taxi, they were used like taxi cabs, flying back and forth, flying weapons south and drugs uh, north. And the, ba the military bases they exposed, they were dropping out the cocaine, were three of them. They were Mena, Arkansas, uh, they were home center for base in Florida. And El Toro Air Base in uh, Southern California. What benefits did the uh, CIA? Did they? Do, do you think that, that the CIA or the other intelligence agencies derived any financial benefits from uh, trafficking? I believe they did because uh, when you're handling cash, and not only millions but billions of dollars in cash, as Oliver North was as was a uh, CIA uh, agent, Ismael Felix Rodriguez, a.k.a. Max Gomez was the way. He turned out to be the Max Gomez that my witnesses identified as, as interrogating Camarena. Can you guys believe that? I mean, this guy, Felix Rodriguez, who has a long history with the DAA, I mean with the CIA, a long history as a friend and close associate of old man, President Bush, a, 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 a person who basically ran down uh, Che Guevara and personally sh cut his hands up with a hacksaw after they killed him, 
a person that has been involved in Operation Phoenix, a person that was involved in the Bay of Pigs, I mean, a long projected with the CIA, who was considered an expert in interrogating, okay, and in interviewing witnesses, was there, placed by three witnesses as one of the main interrogators of Kiki Camarena, along with the uh, D, uh, DFS commandant, Sergio Spino Verdeen, they were the main interrogators of our agent. Do you know, the, the, I just want to stress to anybody, uh, to everybody who's listening, uh, that, that what's being reported here is the is a story of the CIA, or the Americans, taking uh, 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 an agent from the Drug Enforcement Agency, uh, Camarena, who is a very, uh, who is very decorated, taking a, a DEA agent, uh, th- this is the CIA, uh, with members of the Mexican cartel, into a in, into a uh, into a house in uh, plantation in Mexico and murdering them. Uh, I, I I mean the the sheer the the the, 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 the it's not the, the 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 sheer force of that testimony should knock everybody on NBC, ABC, and CBS right on their fannies. I mean what you what you're talking about and substantiating and and I know your background. Uh, I mean, this is a guy that was a decorated DEA agent who was in charge of a major investigation. What he is testifying here, uh, Kevin, is uh, it should be, I mean, it shouldn't just be broadcast here. It should be screamed from the mountaintops throughout the country. But yeah, it's, case, it's, it's, crim- it's you, criminal. You know, why, why does, explain to the, the listeners why, uh, how the uh, CIA manipulates the various cartels in Mexico for their benefit. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to understand that when the CIA in 1947 was granted uh, a complete carte blanche uh, with no definition uh, for covert operations, uh, uh, they went completely out of control, even to the extent of gross human rights violations, gross and I think to date, uh, I think we've noted that about 7 million civilians have died because of these 80 coups that the CIA has done uh, out completely outside of the Constitution. They were created outside of the Constitution. And, and that's that's why what, what Hector, I, I, I can tell you right now, what Hector is saying, uh, based on what I knew, it, uh, what I know is 100 percent true now now i was in the cia during iran contra i was up on the seventh floor uh, on william casey's staff during iran contra and uh, there's a lot of things i can't say or they're gonna just they're gonna whisk me away but i can tell you this they broke the law they violated the constitution they went behind the backs of congress they violated international law, and and a, as the shadow government, deep state, whatever whatever you want to call it, no one was prosecuted. No one spent any time in jail. No one w- was even brought before public scrutiny in the media. The media completely blacked it out. That is what we are trying to tell our audience. Is, is that this shadow government, deep state, is, is and, and it's not a conspiracy theory. If you go into my lectures, I prove it in detail, is so powerful that the, they do the things that Hector is so eloquently uh, put out there. They do these things and they completely get away with it. They're not charged like the little man is. They're not put in prison like the little man is. Not only that, they 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 walk to uh, bigger endeavors. James James Comey went to Lockheed Martin and made six million dollars in one year on their board. No, no, they're rewarded for what they did with billions and millions of dollars to shut them up. So, so, ladies and gentlemen, we, we have a corrupt system that is so beyond the pale that it, 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 will, it, it will blow you, you, your mind. And that's why we're here. We're here to stop this. 
We're here to bring credible people in that have evidence to stop this, because if we don't, um, our constitutional government is over and and we're really close to that. But I, but, but I, I believe in, in the people. Donald Trump was was not elected because he's a beautiful man or he was in charge of uh, the Miss America, America pageant. Donald Trump was elected because the American people had had enough. They loved his message. They loved his message about destroying this deep state shadow government, destroying uh, the, the circumvention of the Constitution. So it's not about Donald Trump. It's about the millions of Americans that have had enough with the things that we're talking about. Uh, uh, because if we don't, if we don't address these, if we don't stop these, if we don't take the risk to our own, our own retirement, to our, our own security, uh, uh, we're, we're going to lose this country. Um, so la- ladies and gentlemen, you, you're hearing, uh, a unbelievably powerful show here. And I just want to say, take this, spread it all over the net, anywhere you can, and, and, and keep it going. These, these two men, uh, are, are heroes. And uh, because because they're taking a risk to, to, to do this, me, you, 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 as they say, you can't kill a dead man. I did this <laughs> a couple of years ago. The, the, ladies and gentlemen, this is powerful stuff. Spread it all over the net. Paul. Let me on. ask. Uh, let me ask uh, Hector. Uh, Hector, tell us, inform the the, the, the listeners about uh the cartel's involvement now in heroin and the fact that that heroin is no longer the main source of heroin is no longer uh the golden crescent or or afghanistan but the the uh the uh, the main source of heroin is now mexico could you explain that and 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 how the cartels are involved how they're protected and how the cia is profiting well, again, I have to refer back to Operation Cassandra, where uh, the, the, the it's coming in from the east now, East Asia now, and from Hezbollah, those countries, most of the heroin is coming in from from uh, from that that area part of the country. Even though I will say that Mexico still imports also um, a lot of heroin into the United States. However, uh, uh, while our, our 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 government continues to use drug trafficking to support their black operations, they're never going to really make an effort to stamp out any other drug uh, trafficking because they use themselves the drug monies to fund their their, uh, black operations, their unauthorized illegal operations. Now, I want to say to the hearing public here, I am not, and I repeat, I am not a conspiracy theorist. Neither do I consider myself a whistleblower, okay? I am an investigator that wants to tell the truth. And as a good parliamentarian, Edmund Musk said, the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. And this is why I've decided to come out and expose the truth. Now, question I'm always asked, Hector, why did you wait so long to come out with the truth? I'm going to explain to you exactly why I've waited so long. While I was with the DEA, I was ordered by my agency, by my director, by name, Jack Lon, to kidnap the doctor that injected um, drugs into Enrique Camarena while he was being tortured. They were torturing him so much, they were burning him with gunpowder that the body, to basically protect itself, goes unconscious, uh, to basically, to, to basically have to feel the pain. And Camarena was going unconscious, and they couldn't continue questioning him, so they decided to bring in a doctor who injected him straight into the heart with lidocaine. Now, lidocaine makes the heart fibrillate, which brings blood back into the brain uh, so that the brain can basically be conscious again, so they could continue, in this case, interrogating him. Well, I was ordered to kidnap this doctor, and I did that. I am, I am, I am the guilty of committing a kidnapping in Mexico, but I did it because the Mexican government would not arrest him. So we, I, I had him kidnapped, and he was brought into the U.S. where he was tried. And, and our case went all the way up to the Supreme Court, as those that follow the case know. To make that long story short, 
Mexico issued a warrant for my arrest for subornation of, of, of their government and also for kidnapping. And they went public demanding my arrest and extradition to Mexico on kidnapping charges, which, thank God, my government didn't do, even though they, they did think about it, actually turning me over to keep me quiet. However, that warrant, okay, lasted for over 20 years to expire. So my, my own government was telling me that if I didn't play ball, if I exposed all this stuff, that they could have me extradited to Mexico or out in a Mexican prison. Believe me, guys, I wouldn't have lasted three days. So uh, I waited 20 years for this warrant to expire to finally be able to come out with the truth. And I did. I was contacted by Megan Kelly. I was on the Megan Kelly show. And everything I just said right now, I exposed to the, uh, the reporters, uh, William Legessenacy and uh, Bob Miller, everything that I just told you here. 90% of that was uh, basically redacted. None of it came out, only a little bit about me saying that that uh, our government was complicit in Kiki's murder. And uh, I had that warrant over my head for 20 years, guys. And that's Ooh. why they kept me quiet. See, they, they compromise you, and then they say, well, you did this, you did that. You have a warrant for your arrest, so you better play, you know, be, be, uh, be, play ball with us, or else, you know, we can have you extradited to Mexico anytime we want. That, that's a great point, Hector. In... in uh... The, uh, the three series I've just done on how the, the government silences whistleblowers, I get into detail into the 40-year uh, perfected operation on how uh, they do that. And, and so hopefully that, that's exposed. Uh, um, uh, I mean, th this, this, is, this is absolutely outrageous. But the beautiful thing about this is we're on the intelligence hour. And in the intelligence hour, we let it all come out with no editing at all. I know Fox edited out the fact that Oliver North was involved in the drug running and their arms running. Let, let me say this. If Oliver North was involved in the drug running and the arms running, he's a criminal. And I can tell you this also because I worked, I was, I was there during Iran-Contra on William Casey's detail, and I can tell you this, that as, as we stood in the house, and, and poor, poor uh, Mrs. Casey, who was a saint to most of us, sat in the house, we, we got a radio call that Oliver North was coming with his NIS motorcade. Now, uh, he shouldn't have, shouldn't have had an NIS motorcade because he was under investigation. Anyway... Um, un uh, unannounced and he pulled up and he gets out and I'm standing at the door screening people and Oliver North walks in gives me a wink I'm like okay sir go on in there uh, and, and later and late this is the problem because Oliver North claims to be such a, a good wonderful Christian man you know which I try to do myself which is not easy and challenging and, and uh, it, 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 sometimes, you know, difficult. But all, Oliver North claims to be a Christian man, and he goes out and he preaches this stuff. And, and uh, he claims that, that uh, Mrs. Casey invited him to come and talk to her. I can tell you this, because I was an agent connected to her, connected to the other agents on the detail, she did not invite him to come. She was kind of shocked that he would come and dealt with it when he arrived. And later on, even Sophia Casey said herself, uh, she, she did not invite Oliver North to come. That was a bold faced lie. Now, now you've got, you've got, uh, and, then, and then you've got Oliver North, uh, uh, Hector, like you're talking about. Uh, running drugs, and then he comes out and he claims claims to be, oh, I'm this wonderful Christian man. Uh, pe people, listen to us. That those things don't match up. And I think it's about time that someone hel holds him accountable uh, for what he has done and what he cl he claims to be. And let's let's sort yep. those things out because I think some of us have had just about enough of that. 
Yep. Well, I can tell you this. The movement on all that cocaine in the mid uh, in mid nineteen eighty five, all the way to the nineties, all that cocaine that was being brought in, ninety percent of it was brought in by the what I call the Ali North Enterprise. Okay. They were running their drug smuggling with total immunity. Now what the CIA did is they secretly through Operation Twofold secretly embedded and brought in over 300 CIA agents that were placed in our foreign offices. And they were placed there so that they could see what operations we were running, what investigations we were conducting that was going to interfere with their Ali Northern Enterprise drug smuggling operations. They were also there to monitor our investigations to see our money laundering investigations. Now, I, our money laundering, through our money laundering investigations, we uncovered billions of dollars of drug monies that were going into CIA coffers. These coffers were there, and this is where the money was going to the Contras and to uh, retired General Richard Secord, who was in charge of procuring the arms, mm-hmm. buying the arms from, with his drug monies to, su- to, to, su- to support this, this, this war, unauthorized war in Nicaragua. Right. In other words, the CIA commandeered uh, the DEA, and and we at the field, the, the the field agents, the actual you know the guys that are out to arresting people, were never told that some of these guys that were running with us, especially in foreign offices, were spies. They were spying us. We didn't know that. Heck, I even had some of them in Operation Leyenda, and they did. And later, uh, I was I found out that some of these guys were not DEA. They were CIA, never went to DEA academies. They were brought in, given DEA badges and credentials, put out in the field to, to, to basically spy on the DEA. And uh, Terry Burke, who later became our acting director, was, was basically one of them that came into Operation Twofold. It is no secret uh, now. It's all come out now. But at the time, this was all, isn't it horrible, guys? We were penetrated by, and came in here by the CIA. So, so you have I, a, I, I, a, 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 federal, a federal, decorated, federal, constitutional drug enforcement agency that the CIA, in violation of not only law, but constitution, penetrated the DEA and had the unmitigated gall and violation of the Constitution to, to actually put unvetted agents who had not been through the DEA Academy in to your service uh, uh, to uh, operate this, this drug operation. Is that true? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, their leader, Terry Burke, became acting director of the DEA at the time. That's why wow. I say they commandeered us. I mean, here we had a top CIA guy acting director of the CIA. And to prove my point, and again, I'm going to say I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I can prove all of this. I'm an investigator, ladies and gentlemen. This guy yes, you Terry can. Burton, yeah, you, you, CIA, you can. I, I, I can. I can back you up on that. Yes, you can. Yes. Well, this guy, this, this gentleman, I'll say, we're not gentlemen, this CIA person by the name of Terrence Burke became our acting director. Well, the day he retired... Guess who he went to work for, gentlemen? He went to work for the um, for a law firm, Michael uh, Lightfoot Law Firm, which was representing some of these corrupt drug lords and Mexican officials. How do you go from being the director of the DEA to go work as a top investigator for a law firm representing the drug lords? And that is no secret. That's where he went. Yep. Now, you yep. guys, you yeah, gentlemen, uh, uh, gentlemen you tell me where this guy's loyalties are. Come on in, Paul. Okay. Uh, I'm afraid I'm going to be, before I lose you, Hector, I, I, I want to ask you about Jesus Vincente uh, Zambada Nibla. Do you, remember, do, do you know him? He was a member of El Chapo's uh, cartel, and he was arrested uh, in Kevin, Chicago you repeat that question? for bringing I can't in a 747 kind of, kind of filled with cocaine. Low. He was arrested, and I, what? do you know what happened to him? I mean, this was one of the biggest drug busts in the history of the country, the guy uh, w- was charged, and then they they, they said, "Oh, uh, he has immunity under the government." And then, bango, he disappears. 
Well, do you know what happened with Nibla and that, that whole thing? Uh, Kevin, can you can you repeat that question for me? I can't hear him hardly. Nibla. Uh, Jesus Vicente Zambada Nibla was a member of El Chapo's cartel. He was busted oh, yes. in Chicago, uh, yes. I, I, and then I he just disappeared. Well, that actually, it came out during his trial that the, 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 the Sinaloa cartel was working with – uh, providing information to the uh, DEA and the CIA. And basically, he testified, or he came out during the trial, I'm not going to say he testified to it, he came out during the trial that the, the, the U.S. government was arming a Sinaloa cartel through Operation Fast and Furious to, uh, to basically arm the Sinaloa cartel so they, they would be the number one cartel in Mexico, to arm them so they could do war with the op- opposing cartels, which is the Beltran Labor Organization, also with the uh, Michoacan uh, Drug Trafficking Organization, and the Zetas. So, yes, the, the, through Fast and Furious, we armed that cartel. And unfortunately, some of those weapons were used to kill uh, American uh, enforcement officers like Border Patrolman Terry, uh, I forget his name right now, uh, Terry Bryan, I believe it was, and then they killed uh, they killed a couple of homeland security agents, or they killed one and shot another one in Mexico. And the uh, weapons used were those provided by uh, our government to the Sinaloa cartel. Hello, Kevin. Yeah, Hello? yeah, okay, okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Hector. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want you I want you to understand something. Because it is so, so important. First of all, Hector, you're a hero. Thank second, you. second, uh, Paul, as you, you know, you you are a uh, investigative journalist extraordinaire. I would Sir, love to spend a day with Hector. That's, that's <laughs> are you kidding me? Third, can, third. I, 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 you have a book here, Hector, that uh, that, that has to be written. Yeah, Bert, uh, uh, Hector, you have a book coming out. Is, is is that true? The book's coming out, and the title of the book is "Betrayed from Within." Oh yeah, good title. Ladies and gentlemen, Hector's book is "Betrayed from Within." I I, I am I am deplore ex, 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 exhorting you. Get a copy of Hector's book because no one has had the courage to do what Hector is doing. Get it. When it comes out, get it. Uh, as I think probably all of us know, this interview is like no interview that has ever ever been done before. Hector Bereas is a hero uh, of the highest quality because he's, he, he literally is, is risking his life to do this. Get a copy of his book. If you value our Constitution, if you value our freedoms, get a copy of that book. And, and ladies and gentlemen, I have got to tell you, I talk a lot about the shadow government and the CIA is the is the central node of that shadow government because they were created under the 1947 uh, NASA Security Act with absolutely no congressional approval. No constitutional approval, no, not not even a definition of what they're supposed to have done, and they have gone completely rogue. And and I think uh, probably more more than any guest I have had on Hector has absolutely quantified that. So so please, ladies and gentlemen, get Hector's book. If you care about your country, if you care about your constitution, if you care about your freedoms, if you care about the freedom of your children and the future of your children, when Hector's book comes out, get it. And secondly, if, 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 if you care about this country, I want you to go out and I, I want you to get, to get Paul's books, Operation Gladio, The Unholy Alliance Between the Mafia and the CIA, and the Vatican. And secondly, because there's a book coming out, I've read it from top to bottom, Killing Uncle Sam, how, how this all happened, written with Rodney Howard Brown. People, please get a copy of that. I think most of us 
uh, anybody that hears this is going to going to realize that this uh, is an interview that has never been done before, and it is powerful. We're going to put it out on the net. We're going to we're gonna, we're going to codify it, and uh, there's there's never been anything like this. And 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 ladies and gentlemen, I want you to take this interview. I want you to take everything that's said here. I want you to copy it. I want you to put it on social media. I want you to repeat it. I want to, want you to send it to everybody that you know, because uh, this is is the things that 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 have been hidden. Anyway, uh, Hector, I I want to give you uh, a last word, Hector. Can you yes. give our audience a last word before we close out? What I want to tell our audience is that the CIA, our intelligence agencies, not only the CIA, we're talking about NSC, uh, DIA, uh, and even the administ- people in the administrations okay, okay, cannot be trusted that they are going to respect our U.S. US Constitution, that they will lie to you, they will do anything from preventing a lot of this information from coming out. They did it when I was with the DEA, and they're doing it now. They're lying to the American people. They're using the social media to lie. And as Kevin can also tell you, the CIA does have a lot of social media on their payroll. They manipulate what is uh, said in foreign newspapers and foreign, um, um, basically, news channels. I know they did that in, in Mexico and, and in South America. And why would they not do it here? So don't trust your media all the time. Please do not trust them because, remember, a lot of these stations and, and, and the news people are under their payroll. Thank you very much. Thanks, Hector. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, you will not hear that kind of truth anywhere else in the media. Rem- please. Remember that and republish that. Paul, uh, Dr. Paul Williams, uh, anything else you have to say as, as we end this? Oh, yeah. I, 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 what we have to do, Kevin, is uh, we have to bring uh, Hector to, to talk to, uh, to, the, to the group in Tampa, to the River School of Government, and to the people there, because he'll, he'll have a, a wonderful welcome there, and it, it, would, it would really help to promote his, what he's doing. So I intend to do that, I, you you know, to bring him into Tampa with you so that we can really get his story out. Uh, Paul, you, you know, my respect for you is huge. And I, I have to put a plug in again for Killing Uncle Sam because uh, I've read that book. Uh, Paul, you're a good friend of mine. I, I know uh, what a magnificent investigative journalist you are. And I, I know what an honest uh incredibly intelligent person rodney howard brown is that that wrote that book with you uh so uh ladies ladies and gentlemen we want to sit down with you and hector uh, killing uncles killing uncle sam is probably one of the best books i've ever read let me just say this ladies ladies and gentlemen this is an interview you have never heard before uh there's a possibility you'll never hear it again. This is absolute gold. I'm imploring you, I'm asking you to take this interview and share it all over social media with all your friends, with your Facebook, with your Twitter, because no one, no one has ever had the courage or the sacrifice to say the things that Hector, who is a hero, yes. Paul, who is a, a genius, and your your humble correspondent, ever before. Ladies and gentlemen, take this, publish it everywhere you can. Guys, uh, Hector, Paul, probably the best interview I think we've ever had. Probably, uh, no, certainly the most powerful we've ever had. Thank you guys for coming on. Let's do this again. Love you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for giving me the time.